everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor lawyer turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 10, 7, and 5. If you are interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist lifestyle, you have come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. In today's video, I'm really happy to show you the inside of Scientific Connections through Inquiry Level 3. This was sent to me in exchange for my honest review, and I really do appreciate them sending it to me because I have been curious about this curriculum since I heard about it. It is actually based on a very popular secular science curriculum um, that has been around for years called Building Foundations of Scientific Understanding by Dr. Noble. Now, I have looked at that curriculum on and off for years since I first started homeschooling, but because I often heard that it involves a lot of parental prep and just figuring out how to make the curriculum work in a practical and easy fashion, I just didn't go there because I thought, you know, I have three different age groups to handle. There's a lot going on in our lives. I didn't want to buy yet another curriculum that would just sit there on the shelf, so I sort of shied away from it even though I was very drawn to the strong scientific content in it and the way that it approached teaching scientific concepts to children before specific scientific facts. The way we approach science education for elementary students in particular is really crucial to developing their interest in science and their foundational understanding of how the process of thinking like a scientist works. Far more important than individual facts of science in that age is the concept of experimentation, of hypothesis, of figuring out how to evaluate a claim properly, you know, to figure out when someone says something or when you read something, uh, is it true? Is it false? Is it tested? Is it not? What is the value of testing? What is the value of scientific evidence? For all of those reasons, I was really excited to be able to see the inside of this curriculum because it is designed upon those principles of scientific understanding, but with a much more user-friendly format. Scientific Connections Through Inquiry, or SCI, includes various different activities all laid out in full color. It also includes scientific facts and information. It also includes access to different videos and web links that clarify the lesson and extension readings. So they'll suggest different books and stuff that would be useful to you. It also gives you a student book, which I will flip through for you later. So when you open the curriculum, you can see it's full color. I actually just pro-clicked it myself and, and bound it. If you guys are interested in seeing how a pro-click works, by the way, let me know and I will do another video on that. Level three and four are currently available on the website. The website will be linked in the description box down below. It is designed to be a 36-week curriculum. However, you can adjust that to however it would work best in your family. Whenever you get a set curriculum like this, be assured that you can follow your own rabbit trails. You can fall off of the 36-week schedule. You can make it a 52-week schedule if you're a year-round homeschooler. The way you do homeschool is the best way for you. And when you get a set schedule, be sure to adjust it to how your homeschool works the best. So when you look at the table of contents, it's laid out with a section on supplies and suggested schedules. And then it goes through with the different topic areas. You have baloney detection kit, which is basically that, that fundamental concept that I was talking about. How do you evaluate scientific claims? And then you have a section on microscopes and cell theory, how things fly, evidence from Brownian motion and diffusion, cell growth division differentiation, and intro to reproduction. Then you have center of gravity, how to balance wobbling wheels, what they are and their role as decomposers in nature. So this is a section on bacteria. The um, color on my printer is a little bit uh, off for the yellow here. And then will it sink or float? So the concept of density and its measurement. Causes and effects of seasonal changes. You have the life of growing plants, energy and motion, so momentum and waves, and then a section on buoyancy. There is also an appendix where they have a microscope buying guide. So I find things like this very useful. If you look here, It'll tell you about different types of microscopes. Um, with my background as a pathologist, you'd be surprised. Like looking at what is commercially available is tough for me because I always had access to uh, pretty impressive microscopes and I never had to buy one. So Psi is designed to be interconnected in the sense that it addresses different branches of science in one year. Just like life, 
and science in reality, they want to show you the interconnections between different areas of science. Like nothing in biology exists separate from mechanical science as well. Nothing in seasons exists without affecting biology, etc. Chemistry and biology are intertwined. So the approach is that there's 11 units coming from all different paths of science. Those four paths are nature of matter, life science, physical science, and earth and space science. There is a legend included. So every time they discuss an activity, you'll see this lightning bolt symbol, a video symbol, science note, historical note, discussion note, student pages, activity note, and extension books. The supply list mainly includes things that you would have at home, including things like table forks and pennies and a broom, but does also include things that you want to make sure that you have already, like a microscope, non-drying model, modeling clay. So again, most of these things you would have, but you need to have a protractor, for example, for the, the season section. So definitely look at the supply list before you begin. After the supply list, you have the suggested schedule for 36 weeks here. Again, you can adjust this as necessary for your own family. But the way they have it laid out, you can see that most of the single lessons are designed so that you do two of them in a week. Some of them, however, are designed to do just one in a week. So here you have week two, and you're just doing this one lesson of cells, one tissues and cells. I love this lesson. This was one of my favorite parts of this curriculum when I flipped through it, is the baloney detection kit. Saying something forcefully does not make it true. Every effect has a rational cause. One event following another does not mean that one caused the other. The inability to think of an alternative does not make a theory correct, nor does proving one idea wrong make another idea correct. All data and or observations must be considered. Beware of generalizing from specific to universal, etc. I think these principles are amazing and foundational to any rational science theory. When you get into the cells one section, the focus shifts to microscopes, tissues, and cell theory. So again, at the beginning of every lesson, they'll lay out the big picture for the four lessons, the materials you would need, and any optional materials as well. Here you have a section on microscopes. It talks about how you would introduce magnification, how to use it, the student page you're going to do, the video that goes along with this about making a microscope slide, and then it tells you that your student will also be completing the page preparing a wet mount slide. So since we're here, I thought I would show you what the book looks like. I actually printed this two-sided. I will reprint some of these pages so that they are single-sided because I realized that in certain places you do need it to be single-sided. Here's the workbook pages for the baloney detection kit, for example, and they have to cut apart these different claims and put them under the, the particular concept that's talked about for baloney detection, like quantities must add up or always check your assumptions. Here, this is the first page for the cell theory that you have to do, and you have to identify these things from their magnified images. So for example, this would be a human iris. I imagine this is an insect eye of some type. Here you have the other page for this lesson, the preparing a wet mount slide. So here you cut out the steps needed and you glue them into the correct order. So I'm just gonna flip through this book really fast so that you can see that it is in full color. There are drawing activities, observation activities, labeling, cutting and pasting, but they are short and sweet and to the point. They do not have a lot of busy work. They really do focus on the foundational concepts behind the lesson, which I appreciate. At the end of doing this student notebook, you will have a pretty good lab science notebook that shows your student what they learned this year. There's also an answer key at the very back. As we come back to the tissues and cells lesson, you have a section here which is designed for the parent to read. So for example, it talks directly to the parent. Give your student a microscope, a selection of tissues they can use to make slides, and you, the tools to do so, etc. There is a little science note there and they give you suggestions of what to look at. They tell you exactly where in the lesson you would be completing any one workbook page. And there is an activity note here. So for example, it'll add little things like this, like a common popular viewing material is pond scum, which will usually have many microscopic critters in it. However, the focus of this lesson is discerning cellular structure and protozoa tend to confuse that. So protozoa will be focused on in levels four and five. 
when we're talking about cell structure here, there's other things that make it much easier to observe. For example, a sliver of cork, um, which gives you a good cell wall, etc. It will prompt the parent to ask certain questions at different points in the lesson. For example, it says here, ask your students to think about how an animal feels to the touch, a puppy, for example, versus a tree trunk, right? So can the difference be explained by the difference in the cells they just noted? And so you have this question and answer session back and forth. I like that the text gives the parent enough information to conduct this sort of discussion without having it be a boring, you know, this is a fact. And now you recite the fact to me. You can draw out the student's own ability to analyze things and deduce things from the facts that you're giving them. Again, the pictures are really beautiful in here and in full color. So again, it'll tell you little suggestions like it is best conveyed by. And then here we have a wrap up section here. At the end of this unit, they should be able to do these different things. And actually, before you move on, this is a good way of analyzing like, have I actually done what I needed to in this lesson? Did I convey these concepts? Did my student understand these concepts? And if not, we may want to look into further books, further videos, etc. before you move on. So now you get to the section on flight. There is optional extension books here, and happily you can see it a little bit more clearly on this page. Apparently my printer decided to cooperate here. So they list about 10 uh, different books that you can use, including a klutz book of paper airplanes, like an activity book that will give you more information about that, and a book about birds, which of course gives you a lot of information about flight. There is a kite building lesson with clear photographs for every step, flying a kite, flying forces, Newton's third law of motion is discussed, you have airplanes and helicopters. One of the things I really like about this curriculum as I flip through it is that it gives you clear direction and an order of operations. Like one, we're going to discuss this, then we're going to do this, then we're going to do this workbook page. But it also doesn't dumb it down. It gives more information like Newton's third law of motion. And depending upon the age of your student, you can discuss certain concepts with them or not. So for example, you might not want to discuss Newton's third law of motion with your four-year-old, but you can definitely build a kite with them as you discuss that with your, you know, six-year-old or seven-year-old or eight-year-old. As we go on, I'm just going to flip through so you can see how this is laid out. But again, you have full color pages, a very clear outline for what we're doing and why. Um, the legend is actually really helpful so that you don't forget or gloss over a piece of the lesson like a video. There's recording your results here, like for plant cuttings, and it prompts you to go to your student notebook. Um, it's definitely extending scientific concepts into real world application. As you continue into the balance section, there are balancing activities with like, you can see a binder clip, a pencil, a piece of paper, concepts like the center of gravity. You're getting into mushrooms and the idea of producers and consumers and decomposers, spores, the density section. Again, you have mathematical notations and calculations that they can practice. In the practice book, there is a full student book page on calculating density. So you have division introduced there, measuring volume, the concept of seasons, sun, the classic lamp around a globe, the soil that plants need, soil water holding capacity. So these are really practical things to learn. You do plan and prepare a garden plot in this lesson. Waves and then flotation and buoyancy. There is an area for topics for further investigation at the end of every wrap up. So for example, here you could do a deep dive or a rabbit trail into submarines, swim bladders, buoyancy, ship stability, um, how they not only keep ships afloat, but also upright, you know, that idea of buoyant force, uh, how pilots of lighter than air aircraft like balloons and blimps adjust their buoyancy to hold at altitude. And again, it says at the end, thank you for supporting us. Um, little pun there. We hope you join us for level four, where we will explore topics from mechanics to food preservation, mapping the earth to microscopic organisms, and so much more. I am really excited to use this. I think this is a really solid science curricula. It's compact, but 
packed with information in a very practical way. There are very practical suggestions and activities to do, like going on a nature walk to find mushrooms, um, doing recordings of those, asking what they already know, noting in past levels that the distinction between plants and animals is, et cetera, et cetera pulling from what they already know to what they might hypothesize to be true and then discussing why that is or is not true. The way this is approached is very scientific to, to use a simple word to describe it. And I think it is very well put together. I'm looking forward to using this next year with my kids in addition to some other science resources, but this will be the science curricula that we do together the soon to be 11 year old, eight year old and six year old all together. So. so I hope this was useful to you guys. I'm really appreciative of Scientific Connections or Inquiry for sending this to me for review. As always, if you have other questions about it, be sure to leave them in the comments down below and let me know if you would like to see a flip through of level four in the comments so that they know that my viewers would like to see it. A couple of the questions I think you might already have is one, do I need to buy Building Foundations of Scientific Understanding by Dr. Noble? And no, you do not. This is a freestanding curriculum. The information you need is in this curriculum itself. It is in all the text that you see here. Do I need to start with levels one and two? And if so, where are they? So they did level three and four first to meet that need that they um, saw in the market. Levels one and two are planned, but you do not have to do them in order to jump into level three. If you do happen to have building foundations of scientific understanding, though, the way they correlate is the psi levels zero through two are designed to correlate with building foundations volume one and levels three through five align with volume two and levels six through eight are designed or planned to align with building foundations of scientific understanding for volume three. And the last question I think you might have is whether there are additional materials that you need to this. And the answer is no. Right now, each level includes this teacher book as well as the student book. And that is all you need in addition to mostly the household materials that are listed in order to complete your science curricula for the year. So I think they have done a superb job with keeping the materials pretty accessible and simple to acquire. If you have any other questions, again, leave them in the comment box down below. I'm super excited to use this with my kids, and I will definitely give you an update throughout the year as to how it's going. As always, you guys, thank you so much for spending some of your time with me. I really do appreciate it, and I wish you the very best day.